and I wanted to watch this before the stream has started already. So let's go. G'day guys and gal. While the Primarchs are often the big boys of each legion, gobbling up the glory like absolute ego goblins, some Astartes stood out as legends in their own right, sometimes embodying the legion better than their Primarch ever could, or in some circumstance, exceeding their Primarch's own greatness. The most notable of these space marines were the first captains of each legion, second only to their Primarch. These warriors often I would say an example of this would be Typhus. Typhus clearly outranks Mortarian as far as Nurgle's favors or favorites go. Had a massive impact on the setting and their legion, with some even surviving to this very day. But regardless if they're alive or not, it's worth checking out what happened to them. Before you Who's the first captain of Ultrama uh, of the Ultramarines? Have I met him? Sicarius. No. It wouldn't be Sicarius, no? The original first captain would probably be dead at this point. I know Sicarius right now is very high up in the ultra uh, in the ultramarine core. Natora, how you doing? Typhus believes he does. I am not so sure. Marnius Kalgar, maybe. Oh. Some guy who is lost during the heresy, but emerges later. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We get started as we approach 500,000 subscribers. God damn, that sounds crazy to say out loud. I'm preparing for the 500k merch drop and it's gearing up to be the best by far. However, that is still a couple months away and we actually currently already have merch available. A sexy big ass desk pad, a cute little beer holder to keep the wheaty nectar cool, a protein shaker for obvious reasons, and a 20 pack of dice, which surprisingly is the worst selling item out of all of them. Does nobody fucking play Warhammer? The dice are priced at half the price of what GW sells and it's the exact same thing. There is also magnets and stickers available. We are down to the last 96 items. The problem with dice, the reason I would probably never start selling dice, most people that buy dice, it's a collector's edition, right? So you want, normally, you want the official stuff because it's part of your collection. If you're going to play Warhammer, you want the official Warhammer stuff because it's part of your collection. Uh, it's sort of like a, a mark of honor. You know, look at me. Items of the one of everything bundle. That bundle being exactly how it sounds while slapping a nice discount on top of it. And this merch drop will never be restocked again, like ever. There will never be any of these products and any of these designs ever again. So if you want to be one of the few people to get a piece of these very practical and well-priced items, like the merch profit margins are shit, I only really do these drops because it's fun and gives me another way to connect with you guys and gal, then the link to buy something is below. Today we'll go over the fate or the current whereabouts of each of the original Legion's first captains. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> We will start with the Dark Angels because first legion, best legion, best Primarch. It's just science. Annoyingly, the Dark Boys are one of the only legions without a clear first captain as their command structure is deliberately murky to make it extremely difficult to infiltrate or assassinate their leaders. The closest thing we probably got was Luther, the Lion's second, but Luther was banished from the legion pretty early on for being a power hungry shithead. You could argue his replacement was Corswain, but due to the funky leadership structure, Corswain was often outranked by unnamed Dark Angels. However, he had the Lion's favor. It's unclear what happened to- Didn't Luther fall to chaos? Corswain after the Battle of Caliban, with some people even thinking he has taken the mantle of Cypher, but that would take about 10 minutes to discuss, so maybe we'll do it in a future video. The Second Legion's first captain got caught on Jeffrey Epstein's island and killed themselves while awaiting trial. The first captain of the Empress' children was Julius Caesaron. Before his legion became a bunch of Julius was actually a pretty cool bloke. He loved art, music, and shiny stuff. He was as steadfast, formidable, and powerful as Stardis. Then he became a degenerate piece of when Fulgrim allowed the soul of his legion oh, to be yeah. corrupted by the Fucking Leia's culture. Fulgrim. Julius was enthralled by the Leia music and eagerly allowed Fabius to experiment on him. During the drop site massacre, Julius fought against Gabriel Santar, the first captain of the Iron Hands, and had his face smashed in, ruining his handsome visage. In return, he brutally killed Santar in a very vicious way, like fully sliced his cock off. Julius would continue <laughs> to be a loyal son of Fulgrim, staying by his side during the heresy as a favored son. After the heresy, he ascended 
decided to become a Demon Prince of Slaanesh and has been the occasional problem here and there, but nothing serious. The Iron Warriors didn't really have a first captain as Perturabo was such a bitter paranoid asshole that he didn't really let any of his sons get close to him. After all, he literally replaced his honor guard with a bunch of robots. But Cardamore Forex was the captain of the first company, so technically he is the first captain. He was a steadfast yet pretty unremarkable warlord during the Heresy, leading his company against the Imperial Fist at the Battle of Fal and then at the Siege of Terror itself. He survived the siege and led his warband away from Terra. During the subsequent 10 millennia of war, Forex became an outcast in his own legion because he was like, fuck this shit, I fucking hate being a heretic but he couldn't leave the traitor forces as he had no other choice. Eventually, oh, he shit. and a loyalist warhound titan became Nemesis, and during a battle during the 13th Black Crusade, he was killed by its brother titan as he was attempting to board it. Overall, an unremarkable and unimpactful captain. Once again, the White Scars don't have a clear first captain, with some thinking it's Jubal Khan, however, Quinn Zai is the most likely choice. An extremely powerful warrior and captain of the Kashyyyk, the elite of the White Scars, Quinn Zar fulfilled his the role White to Scars perfection. are gone Not at the only moment, been right? Like, they're... No one knows whether or not their Primarch is alive. They, they are loyal, but no one knows where they are, right? Fun fact, the current most popular Iron Warrior has half Imperial Fist Gen Seed, half Iron Warrior. How can you have half-half? How would that even work? Agadai's second in command, but also questioning his Primarch's decisions, whilst encouraging his men to do the same and play devil's advocate to their Primarch. First captains who balance out their Primarch's yeah, ego and tempers I mean, were often the best for I mean, uh, so I know for a fact uh, Gilliman right now, during the Dark Imperium stuff, the, the, the Ultramar raids, uh, Gilliman has a number of Marines, so uh, Astartes, under him, that aren't ultramarines. Because basically in the battle, they're deploying blue um, Astartes, there's yellow Astartes there, there's green Astartes. So there's a number of Astartes that clearly don't have their Primarch. So they're just sort of following Gilliman right now. Not even sure what the fuck's going on. I'm, when I'm saying they're gone, I'm talking specifically about their, their Primarchs. For the job. However, Quinza was killed during the Horus Heresy. Jagadai would then offer the role to Jubal Khan. However, out of respect to Quinza, Jubal would refuse, instead accepting the offer to become master of the hunt. Tight, um, Jubal would go on to find and attack Abaddon, recognizing him as a key enemy. However, Abaddon would kill Jubal, leaving the White Scars without many named characters floating around. The Space Wolves have a number of notable characters, the best being Bjorn the Fell Handed, but their first captain wasn't one of them. Gunnar Gunhild, that Scandinavian fuck, was the first <laughs> captain of the Space Wolves, but actually had a pretty mid relationship with his Primarch. He was around for all the juicy shit, like the Council of Nikea and Burning of Prospero, but more so as an NPC rather than a main character. He would go on to of sacrifice course. his life and ship against an Alpha Legion ambush, taking out an Alpha Legion ship in the process. This sacrifice allowed the rest of the Space Wolves to escape and survive. Arguably the best of the first captains, we now have Sigismund of the Imperial Fists. Sigismund was universally respected across all the legions. He was able to become BFFs with most of the other first captains or notables, such as Sevatar, Jubal Khan, and Khan of the World Eaters. It was his amazing swordsmanship combined with his demeanor that made him so badass. However, he would also become one of the only first captains to be disowned by his Primarch after Sigismund started believing the Emperor to be a god and allowed superstition to guide his actions, a big no-no in the secular Imperium. Rogel oh, knew shit. his son was still an asset though, so he repainted his armor black and gave him the role of the Empress Champion. His only goal would be to kill as many Chaos Champions as physically possible. Of course. And holy fuck did Sigismund kill some Chaos Champions. He would somehow <laughs> survive the Siege of Terror despite constantly melee fighting the best the traders had to offer and then would go on to become the first chapter master of the legendary Black Templars. A few centuries after the heresy, an aged Sigismund would duel and tech- Wait, he joined the Black Templars? Technically beat Abaddon, ramming his black sword through the warrior's chest. However, bullshit hacks meant that Abaddon somehow tanked the sword and was able to cut Sigismund in half killing the oh. legendary first captain. Fuck, the Night Lord's okay. first captain, Yago Sevatar, was a fucking legend. He embodied everything admirable about the Night Lords. 
Ruthless, efficient, with a strong sense of justice. Now, these guys are All the disgusting. while not becoming a sadistic fuck. He was more of a night lord than his Primarch Conrad and would often question his lord's philosophies and attitude, especially the more retarded ones. Sevatar was also the only space marine to ever beat Sigismund in an honor duel, although he technically cheated, which was very night lord of him. Sevatar was so respected by the Legion that when he vanished during the Siege of Terror, it more or less destroyed the Legion. Many Night Lords respected Sevatar more than their own Primarch. As for what happened to Sevatar, it's not clear. It seems as if he died during the fighting, however it's a bit shocking that a beloved character would have an off-screen death. A more spicy theory is that he became disillusioned with the traitor's cause and became one of the founding members of the Grey Knights. Either way, I don't think this is the last we've seen of Sevatar. Of the Grey Knights? How would a guy that joined the traitor marines and then got disillusioned with the traitors how would he ever find the Grey Knights? Would the Grey Knights even accept him back? In one way or another. Another complete badass, we now have Ralderon, first captain of the Blood Angels. Ralderon had a great relationship with Sanguinius and was a great first captain, being known for his god tier swordsmanship and lack of fucks to give. He was also a brilliant commander. He stuck close to his Primarch side, hence featured pretty heavily during the Horus Heresy, being Sanguinius' personal therapist for half of it. The most iconic moment of Ralderon was during a Nightlord attack on his position during the Siege of Terra, the acting Nightlord commander of the Legion, since Conrad did and go to Terra, challenge him to a duel. The Night Lord was very cocky, as his sword contained a powerful demon that basically did all the fighting for him. However, as a pretty hilarious prank, born partly from the demon respecting Ralderon, it turned off its power, meaning the Night Lord oh, had shit. to fight Ralderon in a fair fight. Let's just say that didn't go so well. Would the Ralderon- Wait, demons do that? The demon respected the, the guy that he's fighting so much that he turned his power off. That's strange. Very undemon like. Demons do that a lot. I know in the uh, during the fight for um Parmenia, um the demons don't want to come anywhere close to Gilliman. And they also so there's actually this one incredible scene where one of Nurgle's chosen, one of his generals, decapitates himself before he gets killed by one of the uh, Sisters of Silence. He's busy losing the fight against the Sister of Silence and just decides to cut his own fucking head off before the Sister of Silence can kill him because if a demon gets killed by a Sister of Silence, it's permadeath. They, they literally just dissolve you into nothingness. So he literally starts losing the fight. He's like, ah, oh, fuck this. Just kills himself so he can go back to the garden and get reborn. <laughs> it's actually pretty hilarious. Okay, is this a Fabius Bile book? When he tried to make a pact with the demon, the demon only accepted not because of the Aldar sacrifices, but only accepted as Fabius Bile said he would record his disdain to Fulgrim. Okay. Ron quickly besting the Night Lord before Spartan kicking him off the wall, hitting him with the iconic line of, GET OFF MY WALL! thus breaking the Night Lord forces at Terra. Ralderon would go on to survive the siege, becoming the first chapter master of the Blood Angels after the legions were broken up. It's not clear what happened to him after, but I assume he had a solid career before eventually passing on the mantle. The fate of the Iron Hand's first captain is actually quite sad. Gabriel Santa was a legend, an awesome character, warrior, and a genuine friend of Ferris Manus. He had all the makings of a legendary character in the same league as Sigismund and Ralderon. However, during the Dropsite Massacre, he was killed by the first captain of the Emperor's children. Not even in a particularly honourable way. Gabriel had bested Julius and was about to deal the death blow, but due to the gifts of Slanesh, Julius was able to cut up through Gabriel's groin and kill the legendary first captain. Moments later, Ferris Manus would be killed as well. At least the brothers died together. While it does suck that Gabriel died so early, it was an impactful start to the heresy. The 11th Legion's first captain went to jail in Romania for human trafficking, where he fought and was then killed by the Matrix. Although Khan is the big dick daddy of the World Eaters Legion, he was only the 8th company captain, although being Angron's equerry did make him a technical second in command. The real first captain was never actually named, since Angron killed him in a fit of rage when the Primarch was first found by Sounds the Emperor. Like Angron. Angron actually killed most of the World Eater command, leaving the Legion a bit fucked if that wasn't obvious. 
The first company of the World Eaters, the Devourers, were a sad joke in the Legion, as they were supposed to be Angron's honor guard, but they could never keep up with him, resulting in Angron despising them. So whoever was captain of the Devourers was technically first captain, but no one gave his shit and the role was probably changed multiple times as the Devourers would get slaughtered attempting to keep up with Angron. The Ultramarine's first captain was Marius Gage, one of the first space marines Marius to ever become Gage. an Ultramarine. Marius proved to be a competent and steadfast first captain, however he wouldn't really pop up much until the Heresy, when the Wordbearers first attacked Kalth in an attempt to wipe out the Ultramarine's legion. Marius, Marius was on the Gage, bridge. Mr. Demoria of the McCrag's honor, their capital ship, when Lorgar used warp spaghetti to blow it up, seriously wounding Marius in the process. To make things worse, a demon then bit off Marius's hand. However, the Gigachad didn't hear no bell, and would fight to clear his ship of demonic taint before redirecting his forces. As Corferon attempted to escape from Kalth, Marius followed him into the warp, hellbent on killing the fucking pedophile. After some hectic cat and mouse, Marius was able to destroy the ship, with Corferon escaping, which is annoying, I would love to see that piece of of shit dead. However, his own ship, the McCrag's Honor, was seriously damaged. It took fucking ages, but Marius was able to guide the ship back to real space, missing the entire Horus Heresy in the process. Marius would go on to become the first chapter master of the Ultramarines, but we don't know how he eventually died. The Death Guard's first captain is Typhus, and holy shit did he suck. Typhus I had been orchestrating the Death Guard's fall to Nurgle from day one. He didn't give a shit about Mortarion and simply manipulated his Primarch to eventually become trapped in Nurgle's realm and forced to embrace the Plague God. As soon as he could, Typhus then abandoned his Primarch to form his own warbands with his own objectives. Overall, probably the shittiest first captain there is. Wait, but... So Typhus was never loyal? How would he have made it... But how would he have made it past the Emperor? Would the Emperor not have known that Typhus isn't loyal? Was it twat from the start? Yeah, I hate Typhus now. He was always a cunt, one of the first to fall. He was conspiring with Erebus. Like Corferon and Erebus, the Emperor probably never met Typhus. He's just a captain anyway. He was a Psyker, but the Death God and Mortarion hated Psykers, so he became more of a twat. Yeah, I definitely don't like Typhus. The way he speaks to Mortarion. Now, to be fair, I'm not a huge fan of Mortarion either, but the way Typhus speaks to Mortarion, he has no respect. Mortarion has this entire plan of how he's going to defeat Gilliman. And Typhus just goes, nah, I do what I want, bro. Good luck with your fucking war. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want to do. Typhus is still around in the current setting, giving the Tau aids and shit. Azek Ahriman was the legendary first captain of the Thousand Sons, and he performed his role well, attempting to balance out Magnus's recklessness. Ahriman's fall from enlightened Chilla to Pawn of Titsnitch is a tough one to swallow. When Magnus declared for Titsnitch, the flesh change began tearing the few surviving Thousand Sons apart, forcing Ahriman to rush a ritual with the goal of stopping it. The result was the majority of the Thousand Sons becoming these dusty no automatons. Not Gilliman, not Typhus, not Nurgle, and not the Emperor. Kugath seems to have some respect for Mortarion. But why exactly did no one have respect for Mortarion? We need to watch a video on Mortarion. Or I just need to read his chapter book to learn why people fucking hated him so much. And maybe why I hate him so much. Because I have only read the Dark Imperium, and I can tell you, I do not like Mortarion one fucking bit. ...with only a few retaining their consciousness. This ritual would result in a fight between Magnus and Ahriman, with Ahriman being spared due to the intervention of Titsnitch. Ahriman would go off to form his own warband, I'm getting there. mostly abandoning Magnus, but occasionally teaming up whenever the chance to kill some space wolves presented itself. Ahriman is still alive in the current setting, seeking an entrance into the Black Library, as well as a way to bring his dusty brothers back to life. Now we have probably the most infamous of all the first captains, Ezekiel Abaddon of the Sons of Horus. Ezekiel was a monster from day one, much larger and stronger than most Astartes. He would often beef with Horus, but not in a balanced, healthy way. Abaddon always advocated for war and battle and death, with Horus often wanting to take a more diplomatic approach. 
As the heresy ground on, Abaddon lost more and more respect for his Primarch, to a point where when Horus finally died, Abaddon didn't really give a shit and went on to disband the entire Legion and reform it into the Black Legion. He even killed a clone of Horus, dude did not like his daddy. As leader of the Black Legion, Abaddon would become the next Warmaster of Chaos, leading 13 Black Crusades against the Imperium and finally breaking Cadia, tearing the galaxy in half. Abaddon is still one of the main antagonists of the setting, but yeah. with so many bad guys doing wild shit everywhere, he's struggling to get into the limelight. Corferon was the first captain of the Wordbearers, and I'm still pissed off he's alive. Like seriously, GW, kill this fucker off. Kor was actually the adoptive father of Lorga and abused the shit out of his son during Lorga's growing years. After joining the Legion, Kor would conspire with Erebus to turn Lorga to chaos, thus making him one of the architects ah. of the Horus Heresy. Kor was commander of the attack on Kalf okay. and was often seen leading a large chunk of the Legion. After the heresy, Lorga- Which book would I read to learn about Erebus? Because that name seems to pop up everywhere. And yet I've, I've never read anything about Erebus. A make, so there's no specific book for Erebus. You learn a lot about him from the Horus Heresy books. Three first books in Horus Heresy. So I basically just need to make it through the first three, like, the first three books of the Horus Heresy. This is not a joke. Corferon lashed him and beat him a lot. Lorgar was abused. Lorgar? But Logar was the Primarch. How the fuck did the Primarch... Oh, I remember now. He was actually... Never mind. I remember, I remember. When Lorgar became the Primarch, he chose his stepfather to be his first captain. But the stepfather never wanted to serve Lorgar. And that's why he basically conspired to become a fucking maniac, as it were. Lorgar secluded himself in meditation slash fear of Corvus Corax. So Erebus and Corferon became the leaders of the Legion, but since they both sucked balls, they hated each other's guts and entered into a 10,000 year power struggle for control of the Legion. Neither could quite manage to dispose of the other, so they occasionally take half the Legion out for a genocidal stroll in Imperial space every few thousand years. The Raven Guard had a pretty loose command structure, as befitting their more skirmishy style of war, hence didn't really have- You know what I love? He keeps going through all these names, and I know the last one is coming up, the Alpha Legion, and he's just gonna not go, I am Alpharius. And then that's the end of the video. Because who's the first captain of the Alpha Legion? Alpharius, probably. Or someone like Alpharius <laughs> that looks like Alpharius, but maybe isn't Alpharius. But maybe it is Alpharius. Who knows? Like, this whole video, I am literally just sitting here waiting for the fucking Alpha Legion to pop up. <laughs> he is not their tongue have a first captain, especially when 90% of the Legion was killed on Isvan. You could say that the brothers Bran and Agapito became the joint first captain, but that wouldn't really be that accurate either. <laughs> the legendary Sharikin was captain of the 66th company, so despite being a mega badass worthy of his own video, he also doesn't count. The Salamander's first captain was Artelis Numion, and holy shit, he was definitely the first captain. Not only did he lead the Fire Drakes, which was the first company, but he was also the Primarch's equerry and also commander of the Pyre Guard, the Honor Guard of Vulcan. Fortunately, he survived the dropsite massacre and would go on to become the leader of the Legion in Vulcan's absence. After a fuckload of tomfoolery, where it seemed Vulcan actually did die, Numenon and the remaining 800 salamanders put Vulcan to rest and gave him proper burial rites. However, this didn't give Numion the closure he sought. Hence, in a fit of desperate hope and potential madness, he jumped into the volcano that Vulcan was placed in, potentially triggering the resurrection of his Primarch. R.I.P. Numion. And finally, the Alpha Legion's first captain was Alpharius. This is a lie. It was actually Ingo Petch, who had introduced himself as Alpharius multiple times and even got surgery to look like Alpharius, so the confusion is understandable. It was Ingo who suggested making the entire Legion look like Alpharius to be able to confuse the shit out of everyone. Ingo would often impersonate Alpharius, being trusted by the Primarch twins to do a good job of it. Ingo would fight alongside the Alpha Legion against the Imperials. How do you... So... Primarchs are about double the size of normal Astartes. So what kind of surgery could you possibly get 
that will increase your size by double. You have to be about twice as tall. A normal Astartes is about, what, between six and eight meters long, uh, tall? The Primaris is a little bit taller, right? Altarius is small. How small could he be? He's a fucking Primarch stall. Race of the Alpha Legion are bigger than normal Astartes. Alpharius was about the same size as normal Space Marine. He wasn't as big. The smallest Primarch. He passes as a big Astartes. So I don't understand how that could be, because all of the other Primarchs are super tall, and then you just have this one really short guy that, you know, somehow has to make it work. But in a confusing twist of fate, would have his hypno trigger of Xenophon <laughs> activated, thus making him loyal to the Emperor. However, a witch would enslave his mind and activate his hypno trigger of Oranthus, which would make him ignore the heresy and focus on fighting chaos. After more confusing shit, he was left with a motion activated mind stuck to him, meaning if he moved a muscle, he would die. He was last seen standing completely still under the Imperial Palace, waiting patiently for someone to come deactivate the mine. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then buy the Major Kill. Merch. This is the last chance to pick up from this drop. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more first content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yes, but Alpharius was never meant to be strong or anything. He is better as an infiltrator, so he was created to be small. See, I don't I don't know if I necessarily agree with the whole they were created for specific things. Because it does appear as if they had a choice in that. Lionel Johnson, for example, specifically refused to have his legion um, specialize in anything. But it, it was his refusal to do so. It wasn't like they couldn't specialize in something. It's just that he decided, no, we will be better as a jack of all trades rather than sort of like just the master of a single one. Input certain of his characteristics in each one. Yes, but Lion was designed as the exterminator. No, isn't the master strategist Gilliman? Gilliman is considered to be the master strategist. I know the Lion is an absolute godlike fighter. And as many have said, perhaps the only one that can take down Angron. I know they're, they're actually, they were designed to fight together. The, the Emperor designed them to be the perfect army, and then of course, half of them fucked off.